my soul love Jesus my soul hey yes Lord love Jesus I'm trying to find worshipers and folk who come through that old womb of holiness where you had to travail in his presence and say my soul ay 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 love Jesus come on bless his name keep it connected come on my soul love Sanctified folk. He's a wonder in a shot in my soul. What you gonna do? Black in the name of a horse shot. He's a wonder in my He's a wonder in my soul. His name, Church of God in Christ. Yes. Come on, Coach. Come on, Mason's children. Yes. Your heart, yeah, 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 yeah. Cut out the music, come on, yeah, come on, use your voice. Oh, ho, ho, ho. come on, yeah, come on, yeah. Oh. Listening to Robert Holmes Gospel, the station that reminds you God is always there. Hello, I'm Robert Holmes, and I want to thank you so much for joining me for another service on today. Now, if you're new here, please comment, like, and subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. Finally, if you're in a position or would like to support my brand, I would definitely appreciate you doing that. Just click the website link, which you can find located on this website or the video somewhere, and you can support us that way. Next, let's get straight to the word. Thank you once again for joining me and my team. Thank you to join me in the reading of three passages of scripture. And um, we would begin with the passage from the book of Psalms that most of you could uh, repeat by heart if you were asked to do so. Psalm 23 and after we read that um, verse which will come from Psalm 23 will go to Isaiah 43 if you have Psalm 23 say amen. amen 
I want to read in your hearing only verse 4. Come on and read it aloud with me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now the phrase I want you to repeat is simply this. For thou art with me. Now put a Bible marker there if you would. And then let's look to Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43, do you have that? Yes. Look with me to verse 2. Let's read that aloud. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Again, I just want you to look at that um, phrase in verse 2. I will be with thee. Now let's go to the New Testament. Matthew. Chapter 28. And let's look at the last verse in chapter 28, last verse in the gospel according to Matthew, verse 20. If you have that, say amen. amen. Come on, let's read. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. Again, notice that phrase, I am with you. How long? Always. I just want to say to you this morning, no, never alone. No, never alone. Uh, all I want you to understand today, and I'll take my seat is that as a child of God it doesn't matter what you're going through it doesn't matter how many ill winds are blowing in your life you have the promise of God that you are never alone. Now, that promise doesn't mean very much when it comes from human lips. In fact, the people who are very close to me, they know that uh, I hate to hear uh, members of the church when they start that, you know, Bishop, it doesn't matter what happened. Yeah. I'm here to stay. You, you know, don't worry about me. I'm, I'm, I'm here. Can't nobody run me away. Uh, one preacher used to say, you can't run me out of here with a sledgehammer. You can't, you can't run me out of here with a 38. Uh, but all it takes is one little misunderstanding. So, People may say to you that I am with you, like we said as youngsters growing up, you're my friend right or wrong, but if you go to jail, I'll stay home, you know. Uh, you're my friend through the thick and the thin, but when things get thick, they always seem to thin out. But when you have the promise from the Lord, 
You have to remember what uh, Balaam says there in Numbers. God is not a man that he should lie. Not the son of man that he should repent. Because if God said it, he is going to bring it to pass. It doesn't matter how hopeless it seems, how impossible it seems, God cannot lie. And it doesn't matter what you are in. This is a day when it seems as though everybody uh, takes the position as though, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, cast aside and what I'm going through, I'm going through it by myself and nobody cares. And, and uh, so many folk today, they're living frustrated lives, rich folk that are lonely. The young folk who have hardly gotten started in life and yet they feel pressures upon them and their pressures cause them to believe that nobody knows and nobody cares. But I'm here to tell you that it does not matter what you are in, what you are going through, no matter how many human ears have been closed. How many human backs have been turned? Whatever you are going through, if you belong to him, I just wish you'd tell somebody, no, you are never alone. Oh, hallelujah. Now, that was these three passages, and, and I want to start with the last one and go somewhat backwards through this. Uh, in the New Testament, Matthew chapter 28, and the very last meeting, the last encounter that our Lord, our resurrected Lord, had with his disciples prior to his departure to go back to ascend into the heavens and take his place at the right hand of the Father. He is telling them, he is giving them what is called the Great Commission to go into all the world. Now Mark uh, records it one way, uh, Matthew records it another. Uh, Mark, I believe, tells them to go and uh, preach the gospel, whereas Matthew tells them to go and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded thee. I don't understand in this day and age in which we live how so many people now are preaching the gospel that is popular, the gospel that is the practice of the time. Jesus said, as you go throughout the world preaching and teaching, you ought to teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. The, the, the platform upon which the gospel preacher stands is the platform of the word of God. It, it does not matter what society has to say. What does God's word say about the various areas of our life? That's why I cannot understand when a church, and I know you all said, preacher, you're harping on this too much. But the fact is that I don't understand where the so-called uh, intelligent legal minds that sit in Washington, D.C. as the Supreme Court, I, I don't understand uh, what is happening to them mentally when they fail to understand what their rulings in favor of the gay agenda is doing to our society. I don't understand it when God's word says very plainly that God made them male and female and God blessed them and said multiply and replenish the earth. And how can intelligent legal minds not understand that it is cross nature, it is contrary to nature to put a male with a male and a female with a female and then expect any kind of recreation. Uh, it just does not happen that way. 
Uh, I've said it before, and, and I'm still, um, it's still boggling my mind. And I can imagine what it's going to do to young people who are born, children that are born today, when 10 years from now, here is that little boy, a little girl, and he looks down the street in one direction. And here are two males raising children because now anybody can adopt children. And that's a family. And then he looks down the street to the other side and there are two females and they are raising children. And then across the street there's a man and a woman and they are raising children. And all three of them in the eyes of the law will be regarded as a family. What will it do to children who will have to grow up in that kind of confusion? Because those of us who grew up when the world was still halfway right, there are enough issues to confuse us. And I can't imagine what's going to happen to coming generations. If we remember that in the house of God, the platform upon which we must always stand is the platform of the word of God. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But the Lord said not one jot or tittle, not even the smallest letter in the alphabet is going to pass away until my word be fulfilled. And it does not matter what this world thinks. It's what God says that will count in the end. Jesus said, if you teach them to observe all things, whatsoever I have commanded you, you don't have to worry. Friends may turn their back on you, but I'll be with you. Hallelujah. Your family might put you out, but Jesus declares, I'll be with you. Oh, I, I tell you, I, I've said it before. When I look at my young preachers, young ministers over here, and, and the young missionaries that's just getting started, and you're going to have to try to minister the word of God to a world that is going in another direction. I, I really kind of feel sorry for you all. Because, see, I've come to the point now where I can retire any day. And say, like Paul, I fought a good fight. But you who got to come up against this society that really doesn't want to hear the word. And I'm not just talking about the folk on the outside. Even when you get inside the church, you got a lot of folk who want to go through the praise. But when you get through with the praise, they are through. Don't start meddling in how I'm supposed to live. But you see, the only praise that God honors is praise that comes from lips expressing a perfect heart. He doesn't care anything about folk running and jumping and going on who don't intend to live a life that's pleasing in his sight. This is why I love to bring visitors to y'all. Amen. Because sometimes I start dealing with you all on truths that you're not ready to accept. <laughs> but whether you're ready for it or not, here it is. Yeah. Jesus lets them know, as he said earlier, I'm sending you as sheep in the midst of wolves. But I want you to know that even when the wolves are growling, even when the snakes are hissing, even when you are preaching a gospel that is unpopular to your hearers. Hallelujah. And sometimes the very people that will push you out there. Honey, don't, don't you know the Lord has called you? You, you, you know, some, you got a lot of folk that's out there. The Lord said, I didn't send them, they went. There's a lot of folk out there that somebody else sent. You know, they'll push you out there. And then once you get out there, then they'll turn it back. Mm, I don't see what he's trying to preach for. He ain't going to make it. He don't have no word. But the Lord said, if I send you, doesn't matter what goes on, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with you when times are good. I'm going to be with you when times are bad. 
and, and believe it or not, it, the Lord never intended that only people with license, people who are ordained, people who are credentialed would carry his word. Every person who embraces Jesus as Lord, his word is you shall be witnesses. You may not have a license, but you can be a witness. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. You may not have been ordained, but you can be a witness. Doesn't matter whether you're a male or female, you can be a witness. You don't have to stand in the pulpit to be a witness. You can stand on the corner. You can sit down in the coffee break room. Wherever you are, you can be a witness. And the Lord says, while you are being a witness, it may look like nobody is listening to what you're saying. It may look like everybody is trying to slander and castigate you while you are talking about Jesus. But he said, if you could only open a spiritual eye, you'll see that when you're talking about me, there I am. I'm with you. I'm with you telling you, go ahead on. Tell the story. Even when you go in the courtroom, it's not the lawyer. Everybody talk about the lawyer. Who is going to be the best the prosecuting attorney or the defense attorney? But it's not the lawyers that win the case. You know who really win the case? It's the witness. Yeah, you may have a lawyer that's not worth two cents. But if you got some good witnesses, I'm here to tell you, you can win the case. Do I have any witnesses in here? Tell somebody, go ahead on and witness for him. You got his promise that he's going to be with you. Now, not only is he with you, when you are propagating the gospel of Jesus Christ, but look at Isaiah 43, where the Lord says, I'm going to be with you even when you're in trouble. Oh, I know it's nobody in here that's in trouble. You got that court date, you, you got that uh, doctor's appointment, you've got those tests that are scheduled. Yeah, you're trying to make that appointment with the marriage counselor. You need to talk to uh, the guidance counselor at the school about the child. A whole lot of things going on. That simply says that there's a lot of trouble. But listen to what the Lord says here. Verse 1, but now thus saith the Lord that created thee. Oh, Jacob, I'm glad to know who my creator is. I'm not somehow a mishap of the evolutionary process. And I know people who believe that your ancestors are the orangutan and the chimpanzee. Maybe you can't identify with this. But I just don't believe that we got here by the evolutionary process. Doesn't matter how much resemblance we see when we look in the mirror. The orangutan and the chimpanzee, they have no relation to me. But we were created by the hands of the creator. And then after creating us from the dust of the ground with his own hand, then he said, that's not enough. I'm going to have to give you a part of myself. Thus he whoosh, breathed into our nostrils the breath of life. He's saying here, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed the O Israel fear not 
some, somebody's going through a situation this morning and you are fearful. You're facing it with a degree of trepidation. Uncertainty always brings fear. That's why people are uh, more afraid in the dark than they are in the light. The situation is no different. That house you live in is the same at night as it is in the day. But it's just something about it at night when you're home alone. Those little pops, house settling, that don't mean anything in the day. At night it becomes unsettling because you don't know if it means somebody is walking around in that other room or in the closet. Uncertainty brings fear. And a cloud of darkness always breeds uncertainty. But I hear the Lord saying, you're facing that test. And you're uncertain about the un outcome. You're facing that legal situation. And you're uncertain about the outcome. Oh yes, yeah, some things are going on in your life. You just got a taste of the good life. And now you're hearing that the place where you're employed is getting ready to do some mass layoffs. And you're uncertain about your survival. But I hear the Lord saying to you, fear not. Oh, you may not see what's going on in the future. You can't see in the future. You don't know what the future holds. But does anybody in here know who holds the future? If you know the hand that holds the future, if you know that he is your creator, not only is he your creator, he's your father. And the psalmist says, like a father, pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. If you have that father-daughter or father-son relationship, you may not know what's going on in the future, but I know the one that holds the future. Oh, I know you all probably all heard the story of the young man when the train was going at such tremendous speeds out west, going around the curves, the mountains, over those narrow bridges, people looking down and seeing that all it would take would be just for that uh, car to tilt, and it would mean sudden death. And here is a little boy running down the aisles of the train. People are unnerved by him. Said so something's wrong. That, that, that engineer, he's going too fast. Little boy, you need to sit down somewhere. Aren't you scared? No, I'm not scared. Well, don't you know that as fast as this man is going, this engineer, that something could happen and everybody on this train would be killed. But the little boy said, no, I'm not scared. Why? He said, because my dad is the engineer and he knows I'm back here. Don't you know whatever's going on in your life? He said, you can address him as Abba, Daddy. Whatever's going on, you don't have any reason to be afraid. Your father is the engineer and he knows that you're on board. I, I wish you'd just tell about five people. Get up and tell five people, fear not. Yeah, fear not. Oh, hallelujah. I'm halfway finished with this. Fear not for I have redeemed thee. And he said, not only did I buy you back, Satan thought he had you. But to be redeemed is to be bought back. You know, if you ever got in a financial tight and 
You had a valuable piece of jewelry and you went and pawned it. But you didn't want to get rid of it. As soon as you got enough money, you went and bought it back. Satan, he took a mortgage on us. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. But when Jesus came, he said, I came to buy you back. And that's why somebody says, Satan is mad and I'm so glad. He missed the soul that he thought he had. The Lord said, fear not, for I have, I've redeemed you. I've bought you back. But not only have I bought you back, but I have called thee by my name. And thou art mine. Oh, there's nothing like knowing not who you are, but whose you are. I know who I belong to. That's why we used to sing, you bought me, Lord, and paid the price. I belong to you. You all don't know that one. You bought me, Lord, you paid the price, and I belong to you. And as a result, I'm going to do what? Do what you want me to do. The Lord said, because you are mine, you're going to go through some dangerous places. You're going to think the train is out of control. But I want you to know that when you pass through the water, don't worry about it. You're not going through it by yourself. I will be with thee. When you go through the rivers, they will not overflow you. But not only that, somebody is saying, preach, I don't feel like I'm going through the water, but I'm going through a fiery trial. But I hear him say, when you go through the fire, I want you to know you will not be burned. And not only will you not be burned, when you come out of it, you won't even have the smell of smoke in your clothes. Satan might think he's going to destroy you and he could do it if you were by yourself. But the thing you got to remember is it doesn't matter what I'm going through. He promised never to leave me. Never to leave me alone. That's why the songwriter said I've seen the lightning flashing. And I've heard the thunder roll. I've felt sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But I heard the voice of Jesus, and he bids me still to fight on. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. Not only that, he said he'd be with me, as I propagated the gospel of Christ, he said he'd be with me in the time of trouble, going through the water and through the fire. But he also said, I'm with you, even when it seems like death is right there waiting. For the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not walk. Yea, though I walk through the valley, somebody that they feel like you're in the valley you're down in the low place last time you were at church you were on the mountain because you were running and jumping and speaking in tongues but so quickly can you go from the mountain into the valley what is the valley but a low place the enemy wants you to think that god is only with you when you're in the mountain but i want you to know that you may be down 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 in the valley but I hear him say I'm with you even when you're in the valley I'm with you when you can't pay your bills I'm with you when sickness seizes your body and look like it doesn't want you to, to turn you loose I'm with you when you're facing an appointment at the courthouse I'm with you when the tests are being analyzed I'm with you when your name is hung on the highway. Ah, you may be in the valley. I just wish you.
you tell somebody you may be in the valley, but he is with you even in the valley. In the valley and in the shadow of death. Uh, you know the theologians and the biblical historians they are not all sure who is the author of Psalm 23. All that they know is it is a man who has experienced trouble. But we mostly believe it was a Psalm of David. And David being a shepherd, leading his sheep, and always having to fight off animals that would be predators. You know, he stood before Saul and said one night as I was keeping my sheep, a bear came out of the woods and then a lion. But I took that bear and killed him with my hand. I took that lion, I caught him by his beard and rent him in two. So most people believe that the 23rd Psalm is a Psalm of David. That one night when he led the sheep out into the grazing land, up on the mountain on a moonlit night there was a mountain lion and the reflection of the moonlight cast the shadow of the lion down in the valley and as David is leading the sheep he sees that shadow knowing that that lion represents death but I hear David said I'm in the valley and the shadow is death but I fear no evil because I got a security squad. The Lord is my shepherd. That means he's in front of me leading me. But I hear footsteps behind. My two bodyguards are back there. Goodness is on one side. Mercy is on the other. Surely. Surely. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I'm never alone. I'm going to my seat, but I just wish you'd tell three people I don't know what you're going through, but I know you're never alone. Problems on the right, problems on the left oh My God said you'll be right there Seems like your prayers ain't going nowhere You've been searching for answers everywhere I'm Dealing with some situations in your body Better know, oh my God, will make a way Pink slip collection cause you might have had them all Cast your cares on him, you don't fall Praise your way through God will see you through It's only a matter of time The devil's coming strong Put him where he belong I got the faith, the strength and to carry on Praise your way through God will see you through It's only a matter of time The devil's coming strong Put him where he belong I got the faith, the strength to carry on When the enemy comes in like a flood Spirit of the Lord will lift you up Put on the whole arm of God Let me encourage you, the battle is won The enemy kills, steals and destroys But Jesus gives life and restores your joy Whoa, whoa He's testing your faith Just wanna know Strong, put 
more than we even long I got the faith, the strength to carry on Praise your way through, God will see you through It's only a matter of time Devil's coming strong, who then will he belong? I got the faith, the strength to carry on Thank you for being a listener and supporter of Robert Holmes Gospel. You're a part of what God is doing here. We need your financial gifts to keep encouraging others. God is always there. To give either a weekly, monthly, or one-time gift, you can easily donate from our app or text the station at 832-930-4684. Remember, no matter what, God is always there.